So let me paint a picture for you. This 61-year-old um, concrete jungle liver uh, just took a trip to Costa Rica, a completely different type of jungle, and um, live to tell you about it. Um, I wanted to talk about my trip, not just to um, tell you about my trip, but to sort of um, give you a sense of maybe what it's like to um, challenge yourself and to give yourself the gift of believing in yourself in situations possibly where um, you might not have um, otherwise. So let me paint the picture. Um, I'm in the jungle and it is evening, really, really, really dark. Um, the lights in this retreat area are meant to not distract from the jungle. So they're very dim and low to the ground. So you don't see a lot from the with the lights. So you have everyone carries uh, one of those headlamp things. It is raining. And when I say raining, I don't think you understand it unless you've been there. It's literally like somebody is just pouring buckets, big giant buckets of water. This isn't sprinkling. This isn't even any rain that I'd ever seen. It is soak yourself and everything around with this rain. So it's dark, it's raining, and I have to walk back from the um, area where we would all meet and eat to my room, which I don't know exactly how far, but it was down a path and then twisty down another path. Um, certainly far enough to feel um, a bit intimidated by it. It was early in the trip, so I wasn't entirely comfortable about, um, I didn't have my bearings as well as I eventually did. So I have an umbrella. I have an umbrella. I have a headlamp. I have my backpack. I'm wearing uh, hiking shoes that I've been instructed to buy and a rain jacket slicker type that I've been instructed to buy. So I'm head to toe wearing what I'm supposed to be wearing and I'm walking down this path. And all I can hear is animal noises in the distance. And these are animal noises of the kind I never heard before. Could still not tell you what they were. Um, so it was a little uh, disconcerting, as you could imagine. And as I was walking, at one point when I turned the corner and it was muddy and it was raining, there were puddles. So you're using your headlamp really to see right in front of your feet so that you don't um, go off the path or stumble or step in a huge puddle. And to make sure no wild animals are running across your path either. And at this moment, this giant frog, biggest frog I've ever seen in my life, not even sure you call it a frog, uh, jumped in front of me. So I screamed out of shock. At the same time, flailed my arms. Don't ask me why. So now the buckets of water are just pouring on me because my umbrella is, you know, somewhere else. And I'm just terrified. I get myself together. I get my umbrella back. And it happens again. Another frog. Um, not quite as scared that time, but still the scream and didn't throw the umbrella the second time. I made it to my room, obviously, soaking wet, heart beating, muddy, wondering what it was that I'd gotten myself into. And not for like maybe the 20,000th time did I think, I just want to go home. This I just want to go home or I don't even want to go was certainly starting to happen for me a couple of weeks before the trip. I was worried about a lot of things, but it was a business retreat I was invited on, and I felt that it was important to go, but then all the fears started to float in, and they got so strong at some point. The only reason I didn't quit, the only reason I didn't um, cancel, is that I had paid for it, and I'd also told some people that I was going, so it felt like I had to do it. 
were there was a little prop plane to fly into the jungle on. There were lots of trails and hiking. There was a beautiful waterfall you had to hike to. There was vegan food for the entire trip. No alcohol. Um, there were 28 of us and we were, I was a stranger to all 28 of these people. Never, ever met any of them before. So there were a lot of reasons for me to be anxious, a lot of reasons for me to feel um, scared. And I think really, if I was honest with myself, doubting my ability, so, you know, at some point, like doubting my ability to strike up 27 different conversations with 27 different people, to be there present, knowing that I would be challenged both physically and mentally and um, worried about my abilities. You know, I think it, when you're honest with yourself, it comes down to your own um, insecurities about your abilities and your worth and your self-esteem. So I, you know, went on this trip. I had what I can say now <laughs> was a very memorable, life-changing time. I did things and I was capable of things that I didn't really know that I was. And that was a beautiful surprise and changed me. There was a moment where we um, washed clay off our bodies in the ocean, symbolizing uh, washing off worries or pain or concerns that you were carrying around. And I found myself very emotional in the, uh, in the ocean thinking about letting go of that old <clears throat> sense of myself, the old definitions, the stories I tell myself about who I am and what I'm capable of doing. So in therapy, um, you know, we talk about that. I ask people, what is the story you tell yourself about yourself? And sometimes people don't right away get that. But that sense that you are telling yourself every day who you are, you wake up, you put on your clothes, you put on your glasses, you put on your personality, you put on who you believe yourself to be. And because we're human, and because we've all suffered pain, trauma, or just difficult times, there is within us insecurities or ideas about ourselves where that that personality we put on is full of both positives and positives and negatives and we can believe things about ourselves and they can get sort of cemented in our view have you ever had someone say to you um well of course you did that I'm not surprised you did that. Someone said that to me after I got back to Costa, from Costa Rica. They said, oh, of course you went. And I just thought, if only they'd heard all the conversations in my head, <laughs> all the times that I told myself I couldn't. Um, it wasn't, and of course I was going. It wasn't, and it was very hard. And I'm still processing the changes. Um, the the way in which I see myself and how I can challenge that on a regular basis and what it is that I'm capable of. Someone said that you should scare yourself every day. And I don't know about every day, but I certainly think we should definitely challenge that view of ourselves, that coat of personality that we put on every day. One of the things I challenge in therapy a lot, misconceptions that people have when they come in, and it's defense, defensive, you know, it's defense mechanisms that we all use. But when they say, I don't have that type of personality, I can't do that because I'm just not that type of person. Or I can do that because I am that type of person. Or a negative that I am the type of person that always does that, whatever that is. And these ideas that this stuff is hardwired, that we are born fully formed is completely debunked now. Our research shows that we are so capable of change and that our brain is always 
always evolving and we can always challenge beliefs. And when we challenge beliefs, we can challenge our behavior. So nothing's really set in stone. I think we like to sometimes define ourselves so that it's, there's a comfort in that. People love to talk about whether they're an introvert or an extrovert or whether they're outgoing or whether they're, um, you know, with horoscopes and homebody versus um, life of the party. And I'm not saying that these tendencies don't exist. I don't know. But I do know that this person sitting right here, who is probably at times in her life described herself as a somewhat of an introvert, um, was capable in spite of that, of going to Costa Rica and meeting 27 strangers and leaving Costa Rica with maybe not 27, but several friends, like good friends. It's this thing where I think if we can challenge ourselves one thing at a time, challenge our definition of ourselves in ways that holds us back, that our ability to do things is open-ended, our capabilities. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a trip to Costa Rica. It can be as simple as you challenging yourself to show up more vulnerable in a relationship, even though that might make you uncomfortable. And, and you might say, I'm just not the type that, you know, I'm not romantic or I don't know how to share my feelings. We put that definition on ourselves to give us an excuse. We give ourselves an out. I'm not romantic, so therefore I don't have to be vulnerable. So showing up for someone in a more vulnerable way, giving of yourself in a way that you didn't think you were capable of giving, being able to, for yourself, challenge yourself into doing something new or allowing something that you have always wanted but didn't feel capable of. See, we all are living the lives that we have created. Now, I understand that we do not all start at the same place and that not all hands um, are dealt equally. There are lots of us who are born into situations that are incredibly difficult or born into situations that keep us, that start us out way behind. And then we're not given things along the way that maybe some other people are given that'll get us to a point quicker. But I'm saying within you, there is the capability for you to challenge who you think you are and what you think you deserve and mostly what you're capable of doing. Within your world, you can have better relationships. You can have a better career or a job. You can have better friends or romantic partners because these things get created out of our own self-belief. For some of us, it's a little bit harder road to climb up, you know, sort of like that path up from that waterfall. It was, you know, tree roots climbing. It was very Harry Potter-ish actually tree roots that were kind of used as stairs and using um, vines and branches of trees to pull yourself up. It's a very rustic um, path because they wanted to keep it looking as natural as possible, which is wonderful. But for this 61-year-old with the arthritis in her right hip, it was a challenge, but so worth it. And I could have said no. I could have forgotten, forgotten, start over. I could have forgotten the hike. I could have said no. But I was there and I knew somehow that I could do it. And I did it. And it was spectacular. It was a beautiful waterfall. Several of the vegan meals were a mystery. You know, it was, we had uh, the menu, but once you got this, bowl of food, um, you weren't always sure what you were eating at what point, um, especially at night. It got so dark there. So you took a bite and you tried it. And sometimes that was okay. And sometimes it wasn't. 
but it was always something I chose with intention. And I also chose to speak with and sit with different people every day so that I could get to know everyone. And I watched myself judge people by how they showed up or what they were complaining about or what they were wearing. But then I challenged myself to sit down next to that person and have a conversation because I was sure I was being judged or I was being viewed by what I was capable of doing, what I was wearing, how I was acting. So it was a daily intentional challenge for me to live within this jungle, to hike to breakfast and hike to the meetings and hike back to lunch and hike to the meetings. It was a challenge. I had a roommate. I haven't had a roommate other than my husband uh, for 30 years. There was just a beautiful onslaught of challenges. The shower in the bathroom was open air. So every morning it was, you know, basically a bit of a surprise to see what or who would be waiting behind um, the corners. Thankfully, it was never anything bigger than a bug. But you shower with one eye open because out that whole side of the shower is the jungle. So it was a constant sort of, uh, you know, I had things to do, I had obligations, and I had responsibilities. And then I had my fears and I had my doubts. So what I did every day was just intentionally try to let myself be what I needed to be that day. And um, I surprised myself. So how do we do that? You know, how do we just wake up to our capabilities or our possibilities? How do we stop limiting ourselves with um, statements like, I'm not the type of person that can or I'm not the type of person that does that, or I'm only the type of person that does this. Well, it takes recognition of that first. It takes, you know, realization that you are talking to yourself that way. And then it takes deliberate, intentional change. And it doesn't happen overnight. It's not one of those things where I went to Costa Rica, so I'm cured. My insecurities flew to Costa Rica and on that prop plane, and they flew back, and they're still here. But I do believe that I can consistently challenge them and do things anyway. You know, you can carry the fear with you. The fear doesn't have to mean don't do it. The fear just says, yeah, this is scary. The prop plane ride from the main airport into uh, where the retreat was, there was, you know, at any given moment, I don't know, I think they divvied up over three or four planes. So maybe there were 10 of us on this one flight, maybe a little less. And um, all of us were joking and laughing until that plane taxied to take off. And then everyone was quiet for the 20 minute flight. So everyone was scared. You know, everyone was looking out the windows and watching and everyone clapped when we landed. Um, but we did it anyway. And I am not the bravest person. I am not the one that always says yes first. I often am one of the last to hand, put my hand up. So if I can do it, I certainly know you can. Because it's not about some born quality in me. You know, if you've listened to any of my other podcasts, you know that I came from a childhood that was not uh, encouraging at all times. And that was actually very violent and um, dysfunctional. So there's there's a miles to go sometimes for me to get to a place of feeling good about myself. Sometimes I can dip into quite a lonely, sad place. And then I start to feel really bad about who I am and what I'm capable of doing. So I know that, and I know that you all can do that too. So 
take a deep breath, make sure you breathe, and see what it is in your corner of your world that you can do that could just prove something wrong in the way in which you speak to yourself, that could just allow you to believe in yourself just a little bit more. It can be anything. It can be, I'm going to read a book and I haven't read a book in 20 years, but I know that I want to and I can. It can be changing jobs. It can be, as I said, showing up for somebody in a new way. Think about your life and think about the ways in which you limit yourself by your very own definitions. No one else's, but yours. In therapy, we try to help get those stories out, make them more conscious so that then you can change them. You have to be aware before you can challenge them. And once that awareness shows up, then we got to act. We got to do things to help prove to yourself that some of these belief systems are not, they're not serving you anymore. And there's so much more you are capable of doing. I think a big misconception or misunderstanding in therapy is that we tell you what to do or we tell you how to do it. And that's impossible because I can't know you like you know you. But I can walk with you. I can hopefully show you by example, but also just be with you as you discover more things about yourself. I can help highlight things I hear you say so that you might not even be aware after all these years that you talk about yourself in such a negative way, or you downplay yourself, or you don't believe in yourself in certain situations. As I said, limit yourself. So in what ways do you limit yourself today? And in what ways can you challenge that? Nothing's too small. No change is too small. You will start a bit of a ripple effect in your life for yourself and for others in your life. Thanks for listening to my Costa Rica recap. It may pop up in future episodes here and there as I process how it changed me and how I felt in that, in that jungle um, about what I was capable of being and doing. But f- until then, thanks for listening. I hope this was useful. Talk to you soon.